What's good, YouTube? It's Mirrorboy Squiddy back in another Squiddy Ale. So, yesterday we made a video about Drone Lockbird, and I have to say, the heat on that video was absolutely crazy. <laughs> Everyone was going in on the comments, and honestly, in hindsight, for good reason, because we didn't really explain well enough. I think we came on a little strong with how Drone Lockbird functioned in the meta, just saying that it was outright bad. But in honesty, in retrospect, after reading your comments and seeing your guys' thoughts on the matter, I totally just want to make another video to follow up to discuss the arguments for and against Dro and to clarify a little bit about what we meant by Dro being bad, per se. This is not a video to backpedal by any means. I still don't think that the card is that good in the metagame, but I figured, you know, for the purpose of responding to you guys and also create a healthy discussion for the card, because at the end of the day, we're all Yu-Gi-Oh players and we all like winning, right? We all want to win in a competitive environment, so why not maximize our potential in doing so and having healthy discussions about what cards should be played and what cards shouldn't be played depending on the metagame. So the purpose of this video is more to discuss that, to discuss my opinions, to kind of clarify what I feel about this card as a whole, but also to take a look at your arguments, take a look at your comments on what you guys have uh, thought up and what you guys have been making as points to play the card and discuss the logic and see which, you know, which sticks best, right? I will, however, acknowledge that the previous video was framed a little poorly and basically said that, yeah, Droll and Lockbird is a crap card. You guys should not play this period. You guys should put this in your bulk. But in hindsight, it's probably not that bad, okay, guys? Like, this is still a card that's decent, so I will take the L on that one. I think the card is still... It's not unplayable, okay? It's a decent card, but I just don't think it's that good. And uh, with this video, I definitely want to clarify that. All right, so now let's take a look at the comments on the previous video to get a sense of your guys' arguments, get a sense of your guys' points for the card and see what the community thinks as a whole. Ooh, ooh, so much heat, but good thing we have a thick squid skin, so we'll bear in there. Okay, so uh, people are saying, stop playing this card if you want to win is titled. Yeah, maybe the title, you know, should have been a little less uh, clickbaity per se, and maybe more along the lines of this card might not be the best card. Uh, but I think... As a whole, it's just a little too high variance. Um, someone said that going neg one to end an opponent's combo line is best. Limit their combo, admit, or still lose when they drew the nuts is still massive. A hand that plays through a drill probably already wins the game. Uh, I mean, th the thing is, when you say it like that, then you're kind of expressing that if Droll wasn't in your hand and you had nothing else, right? But I guess the key argument that I want to make is that Droll should definitely function as another card. For example, if you had another hand trap, uh, that might still limit their combo, but again, you're trading value. For example, something like a Nibiru or an Imperm, you're still able to trade value as a one-for-one. One. Even though cards like Imperm, you're using it on a monster, you're not necessarily trading it for a card up front. You're still getting value because you're preventing them from uh, potentially resolving an effect. And because a lot of effects are once per turn, like hard ones per turns nowadays in the game, this actually guarantees that that effect will not see the latter day again, whereas Droll is not responding to an effect explicitly, it's more responding to the action that the player is doing, for example, searching the deck. So they're still going to be able to resolve those once per turn effects. They're still gonna be able to hard, uh, they're still gonna be able to choose the effects that they wanna resolve. So for me, I'm just comparing it to other cards. Like if you had like an Imperm, for example, against a Pure Lee deck, and they go like Pure Lily and they add, we could have just used the Imperm to stop the Pure Lily, which is a hard once per turn effect. But then Drone Lockbird there would have just cut them off, sure, from searching with the My Friend Pure Lily, but they still have the effect of the Pure Lily. They still have My Friend as a follow up. You're not really denying them a lot of resources. You're denying them, like, sure, their combo line, but they're still going to be able to kind of mold their play around that with the resources that they have. They gain an additional resource from the search, and we're down a card. So we're already down a two card differential. So that's sort of like the argument that I had. Um, this dude Lodge McNeil sense, they can still make a board and think of how much the board would be, how worse otherwise. Yeah, I mean, that's completely valid. Obviously, if you don't have Droll and you don't have anything else, their board is going to be insane. But again, I was sort of thinking, you know, if Droll was another card, obviously in the Droll slot, it would still be a disruptive card, ideally, because this is a non-engine piece that we're talking about. So you can't just take Droll out. That's not really what I'm saying, but rather play other cards that sort of fulfill the same purpose uh, as Droll as a non-engine card but has a little more diversity like in terms of actually negating hard effects or countering hard cards one for one. So you're guaranteed to get that value as opposed to sort of rolling the dice and hoping they don't have a good hand or they have to play into Droll. 
But I mean, all of that being said, there still are obviously instances where Drone Lockbird are way better than a card like Nibiru or an Imperm. For example, if it's your only non-engine hand trap and your opponent is playing like a combo deck that relies on searching, or for example, when your opponent starts off their turn by using a starter that branches into another starter, for example, like playing the Cast Cure Field spell, playing Pot of Prosperity, something along those lines, or summoning like a Purely into like My Friend Purely. But the instances of that happening versus when it doesn't happen is just too high variance in the current metagame. You never know if your opponent is going to start off with pot. You never know if your opponent just has all the engine pieces that they can just mold their starting search based on their hand to play around Drill Knockbird. So that's just the one thing I don't really like about the card as a whole. And I just don't like how high variance it is across 10 plus rounds. It just becomes a little bit too wishy-washy and not super reliable uh, in order to further your plays. Mind over 9,000 sets. Currently, it's one of the best cards to counter combo decks and negate the opponent's card advantage. That's totally valid, especially in a deck, I think, where you're playing not a lot of hand traps or non-engines. If you're playing something like super combo heavy, for example, like a deck like Dragon Link, where you kind of have to bank on your non-engine actually resolving and stopping your opponent because the chances of you opening multiple non-engine are highly low since your core engine is so big, right? You probably only play like nine non-engine cards sometimes, maybe 12. So the chances of you seeing one non-engine are quite high, but two non-engine are relatively low. So then that becomes a situation where I think Droll Knockboard is decently good. Unfortunately, you just have to play one card non-engines that are high impact. And even though Drone Lockbird is high variance, it can still be high impact. So you kind of have to roll the dice to hope that in a given tournament, you A, win a lot of die rolls, and B, the die rolls that you don't win, your one hand trap non-engine is enough to actually stop the opponent or whittle them down enough where your engine can kind of take over. So I will definitely say that it is definitely a decent card in those type of decks where you can't play a lot of non-engine, you can't play a lot of hand traps, and you really have to kind of gamble on that high variance that Drone Lockford offers. Then in that case, I could totally see it being a good card per se. Uh, that's something we definitely should have went over in the previous video. And after seeing some of your guys' arguments, I definitely agree in that aspect. So uh, this person mentioned that versus Cash Tier, you forgot to mention that Drone Lockford is flat out dead against... Uh, Shifter, because Shifter obviously banishes everything, and Drone Lockford has to send to the graveyard as a cost. So unfortunately, Drone Lockford would be dead in that scenario. So against Shifter decks, it's definitely an argument to not play it as well. Um, let's get started playing Chimera. So he's not. <laughs> yeah, we're playing Chimera, so we're convincing everyone to not play Drone. But the the thing is, I feel like the current Chimera deck, if you don't play the Patchwork engine, Drone Lockford is actually not that effective against the deck as long as we're not at as long as we don't open with something bad, like one Coato that we have to resolve, if we're just opening with Sword Knight and then go into our combo, search the two pieces off of Burfamet, then that's fine if we get drilled. We're gonna lose a search on Gazelle, but we're still gonna get the rip one out of hand. So now with the drill, we're ripping out two cards. It leaves three cards in our opponent's hand. We get to reset the Chimera Fusion. So we have Guardian Chimera, and then our opponent's turn, they draw to four in hand. We do get to special summon back the Sword Knight off of the Burfamet as well. So we're gaining another plus two on the draw phase. They have to play with four cards in hand, past the Guardian Chimera that's also drawing up to two cards, including hand traps. So in that scenario, I honestly don't think that Droll is even that good against the deck, unless they're playing like Patchwork or a lot of other cards like that that have to search. So Droll does have that higher chance to hit the high variance where your opponent just has to pass, right? Where they just can't play off of any cards in their hand because they're all negated by Droll Lockbird for the rest of the turn. Thirsty says, with all due respect, I've never heard a worse take. I mean, yeah, in all honesty, we'll have to take the L on the first video. I think we came a little bit too strong ragging on Droll, and it almost seemed like we had like a personal bias against the card, like we just hated getting Drolled. Uh, but that's just not the case. I think, I hope that this video follow-up will serve as a better uh, video that promotes healthy discussion about the card, about why you may or may not want to bring it to an event. And at the same time, I'm also getting your guys' counterpoints, getting your arguments for the card. So I think it's really, really cool to see both sides and see what the community thinks as a whole. At the same time, we're also seeing like, from the community, we're kind of gathering information about what might be pre prevalent at a tournament. Like if this many people like Droll, then maybe that means Droll is going to be a mainstay in the format and people should definitely still respect the card and play around it. We all know the real reason of this video are trying to get Drogon so we can play Dark World again. Yes, Dark World. Imagine, see, this is one reason why Drone Lockford's existence is so good because it actually cripples decks that are so 
like basically FTKs in so linear and solitaire that are not remotely fun or interactive to play against dark decks like Dark World, which obviously should not be playing the way it does that it loops your hand and you don't get to play a turn. So I'm honestly glad that Drone Lockbird is in the game at least so Dark World is not a menace. This person says, I completely agree, Droll has to be in your side. I could totally see it being in the side deck. I think it's fine to queue up into a regional or YCS with Droll in your side deck, but I guess I want to challenge the community and see, are there any better cards that actually fulfill a similar role as Droll, but still guarantee that your uh, less variance and does exactly what it wants to do and is a solid card option that completely stops your opponent or has a less chance to not completely stop your opponent. But Droll, I think, has an equal chance almost of both to either be super good or super bad. And again, that's why I don't really like it. This squidlet says, for my regional, I made the medical not to play the card. Most time, your opponent is going to add the card that completes their combo anyways. Myself, I got drilled five times and won every one of those matches. I lost two games only, one to dead hands and one to a misplay. So again, the issue for the card is its high variance in the effectiveness. And I absolutely agree. It's like, do you really want to roll the dice going into a tournament to see if you're going to win or not based on that one card's high variance and effectiveness? Because when it's not effective, we're not going to be winning the game. So... That is definitely what I think I'm in a line with in terms of the card. A squidlet here says, I don't know, squid, this just feels like a plea to the community to stop playing Droll for personal reasons. I honestly have gotten to the point playing in the current format where I'm like, okay, I hope I get Drolled in most of my hands because the only times that I don't want to get Drolled again is when we have to start with a starter that needs to bridge into something else that has to search to go to the combo. Every other hand, we can just search to get into our combo immediately. And when they Drolled, it's like they almost discarded a card for free because we're not losing any value. So I honestly think that we're the better players are definitely crafting their deck to play around this card now because you have to respect it. It's sort of one of those cards that are high variance, but also gets worse as more and more people expect it, as more and more people know how to play into it. And as more and more people build their deck, in a way that they can counter the card directly, whether that means playing cards that counters the opponent's deck directly, that's playing Droll, or just playing more defensive options, you know, like hand traps and stuff to stabilize even if they get Drolled. A squidlet here says, I don't know, squid, this just feels like a plea to the community to stop playing Droll for personal reasons. I honestly have gotten to the point playing in the current format where I'm like, okay, I hope I get Drolled in most of my hands. Because the only times that I don't want to get drilled again is when we have to start with a starter that needs to bridge into something else that has to search to go to the combo. Every other hand, we can just search to get into our combo immediately. And when they drill, it's like they almost discarded a card for free because we're not losing any value. So I honestly think that we're the better players are definitely crafting their deck to play around this card now because you have to respect it. It's sort of one of those cards that are high variance, but also gets worse as more and more people expect it, as more and more people know how to play into it, and as more and more people build their deck in a way that they can counter the card directly whether that means playing cards that counters the opponent's deck directly that's playing droll or just playing more defensive options you know like hand traps and stuff to stabilize even if they get drolled and then we have a squid that says, I'm going to be honest, this video just reads like someone who's tired of dealing with Droll and using their platform the way those they can reach. <laughs> I Imagine if like I tell you guys not to play Droll and then going into the YCS, I'm just like main decking three Droll and no one else is trolling. But honestly, uh, I would never, ever use videos to mislead anyone. I think the goal of making content is just to, uh, number one, have fun, but also promote the competitive game, promote like discussion, uh, help you guys get better and also help myself get better because it's lovely to see people commenting and also make good arguments for cards. Even like in this video, a lot of people have great arguments and I would never actually <laughs> trick anyone using this platform because I think that's honestly just not cool at all it's really misleading and it also tarnishes a lot of your credibility as a person and also as someone that makes videos for the community right so for me i definitely would never ever do that so you guys don't have to worry i'm probably not going to play drone lockbird for the upcoming ycs vancouver you heard it here first so if you guys do play against me just know that you can play directly in a draw and you're probably not going to get draw. <laughs> and then they say that this format, you have a lot of combo decks that search plenty to warrant draw, not to mention five of the top seven decks use pots to find their starters. A drawed board is worth at least two interactions less than a non drawed board. I totally agree with that. There are times where Drone Lockbird is just so much higher impact, especially if it's the only one card in your hand and you really have to bank on getting on the head side of that coin flip of the high variance. But... 
I still feel like even though they're putting up a weaker board, you're still, remember, you're still trading one card in terms of card advantage. So you're left with four cards in hand. You're starting your turn with five cards, with card down. And even if our opponent doesn't have interactions, they're still gonna be able to keep the resources that they would have spent previously into any other hand trap they would have kept those either into deck or in hand. So even if they put up a board with like two negates and then maybe like a hand trap in hand, sometimes that's still enough. If you're playing against like going back to the purely example or any other deck that adds, even if they go pot up prosperity to add a card and we draw there, sure it start it stops potentially their combo, but the rest of our hand still has to be good enough to play through whatever minuscule board they have on top of them having an extra card on us. So that extra card could just be a hand trap or a non-engine that was saved left over because they would have spent that engine instead to go into a card that would have traded with another hand trap. If we imperm something like a pure lily that got special summoned off of one of their purely quick play spells, it means that they discarded a quick play spell from their hand and also also used a, another card. So they used two cards to put that one purely on the board and we traded an Imperm for it. Whereas if we drilled, that means they probably kept that quick play spell card in their hand and they probably kept the discard as well. Whereas they also got the search on top of all of that. So now we're down multiple cards in response to uh, the potential board that they could have put up, right? They still could put up a board, but they're still spending cards to do it. Whereas against Droll, they're not. Droll is really just buying us a turn. So we have to use that turn to capitalize. Sometimes you can obviously, but a lot of times you cannot because you're still gonna be down in terms of resources. I don't know if I really explained that well, but that's just generally how I felt with the card. It, overall, it's just very high variance into a 10 plus round tournament, eight rounds even. I just don't feel comfortable playing the card right now. I could totally see it being side decked for good reason. There are a lot of decks that it is highly effective against like Manadium or any other combo deck. But personally, I just don't feel like the card is that impactful. I think it's the type of card that's almost like a trap going back to the previous video, the terminology we use there, saying that a lot of people just stick it into their main deck at the beginning of each format before the format's solved because they feel like there's this one crazy combo deck that everyone thinks is gonna be good, but then it just doesn't see a lot of play. Like Manadium, for example, because of the fact that people are playing hand traps and because of the fact that I guess Droll exists and people are playing it, people stop playing those decks. But I definitely think that draw will come in and out of the format or ebb and flow. I just think for the current time as of making this video, it's just not a very great card. But I could totally see that you guys side deck it anyways. And I'm glad that everyone just came and made a lot of arguments for Troll. I think that's definitely something as a community we should definitely do. We should call out things that we think we want to challenge that potentially could make us better players, potentially could make us win the game, right? So as a whole, I'm really appreciative that people were so passionate about the card. And I actually want to hear your guys' thoughts in response to what we talked about in this video. Do you guys still think it's a card that should be main deck or should it still be a card that should be potentially side deck? Or are there just better options that we could side deck or play in terms of uh, one for one trades, in terms of getting that absolute value against monster effects? Is it better to play something like an Imperm or an Effect Veiler over Droll? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear it. Definitely let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thanks a lot, guys, for checking out my videos. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.